Well, over the last three years, they, they started using pumps like the diabetics use. And yeah. they, they have a small needle, it's a curved needle, that you push up under the skin and it goes into the subcutaneous or the fatty layer of the skin in between the skin and the muscle. And it gets infused slowly that way. So you can give IgG that way? It's an excellent way to give IgG. Easier? Much easier. Better for the patient? Much better for the patient. Is the patient able to do it at home? Uh, yes, absolutely. Tell me what they have to do and, and how you regulate how much you give them and how you monitor that. Tell me, because it looks like that's the treatment of the future is sub-Q. There's no question. Tell me about how it's done a little bit more so I'll feel comfortable. About well, it. it's drawn up in a pretty large syringe. That syringe is placed in a pump. You have four spaghetti tubes, I call them, very tiny tubes that attach to these small needles. You can put it in your, in your abdomen, upper and lower abdomen, uh, the flanks, the buttocks area, and even in the thighs, and slowly infuse four different sites at one time, usually over about an hour. Hurt the patient? Oh, you do it over an hour? Over an hour, yes, sir. Does it hurt the patient? Uh, there's a little bit of local swelling, but those, those sites, after about 20 or 30 infusions, uh, the patient seems to acclimate. It doesn't seem to swell as often. So uh, very few side effects after the more you do it. Now you're replacing this immunoglobulin antibody G. Yes. What does it do for the patient? How, what's their history? If they've been having lots of infections, uh, rare infections, two pneumonias a year, what do you see in these patients that you infuse this? In most cases, we see a stronger immune system than a normal patient. Wow. One of our largest problems with these patients, they're so used to going to the doctor when they get sick, they don't want to come back to the doctor when they're well. So we have a lot of trouble coaxing them to come back in to see us because they just don't get sick very often as, at all. If you get the IgG replaced, I take it you can still get a common cold. Sure. But you don't get these rare, big bad illnesses. Well, you get less common colds too. It's not unusual to see the member of the family that's on the gamma globulin uh, miss, miss the flu and miss the colds that are going around in the family. And it's, it's a real, a real uh, happy time for those people, but not for the other family members. <laughs> Do you have to keep infusing the immunoglobulin G uh, for several years, several weeks, several months? It depends on the problem. Some people just don't make quite enough and after they go a year or two without being sick all the time, they start making it. One concern we had was if we give this stuff to people, are they gonna quit making it on their own? The answer is no. But the people who don't make any of it, uh, it's very uncommon for them to start making it again. But I've had two patients in 20 years of practice that started making their own again. They went from zero and just started making their own, even being on infusions. If somebody's sick all the time, sometimes they get puny. Mm -hmm. Do the people that are not getting sick all the time because of this subcutaneous infusion of IgG, mm -hmm. do they look stronger, feel better, do better? It's, it's a life-changing experience for these patients. It's, these people are depressed because they're sick all the time. They go to the doctor all the time, the pharmacist all the time. They're tired all the time. It's, it's amazing to see the transformation in the majority of them.